You may be seated. On behalf of Chris and Alyssa and their families, I'd like to welcome you to this very happy and holy occasion. It's fitting that you should be here this afternoon because so many of you have had a large input and investment in the lives of these two people. And they first wanted me to express to you their thanks for all the love, all the prayers, all the encouragement that you have shown them over the years. A marriage is not man's idea. Marriage is God's idea. In the book of Genesis, it's very clear that it was God who brought the woman to man. And if that's true, then everything about the service, all of the vows that will be taken, all the promises that will be made, everything needs to be entered into soberly and reverently mindful of the fact that it is God who officiates over this marriage today. So would you join me please and let's pray and let's ask his blessing on our time together. Would you bow your heads please. Father in heaven we thank you that you give us all good things and one of the things you have given us is this institution called marriage and these two people believe that you have brought them together that they're about to make uh, promises not only to each other, but more importantly to you. And so, God, we pray that you'll bless this service, that you'll be here, Jesus, just as you were at that wedding at Cana in the Gospels. We pray that you'll be present here in a very special way. There'll be many of us who will be recounting uh, times when we walked down an aisle and made the same promises to another person and to you. And I pray, God, you'll use this service and this ceremony in so many blessed ways. Would you please, Lord, have your hand upon every part of it. We ask for your presence and for your blessing. In the sweetest name we know, Jesus, amen. Who gives Alyssa to be married to Chris? Her mother and I. some scripture readers now. They'll come forward, we'll hear some scripture. From Proverbs 31, 10 through 31. She is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will not lack anything good. She rewards him with good, not evil, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with willing hands. She is like the merchant ships, bringing her food from far away. She rises while it is still night and provides food for her household and portions for her female servants. She evaluates a field and buys it. She plants a vineyard with her earnings. She draws on her strength and reveals that her arms are strong. She sees her profits are good, and her lamp never goes out at night. She extends her hands to the spinning staff, and her hands hold the spindle. Her hands reach out to the poor, and she extends her hands to the needy. And she is not afraid of her household when it snows, for all in her household are doubly clothed. She makes her own bed coverings. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known at the city gates, where he sits among the elders of the land. She and excuse me, she makes and sells linen garments. She delivers belts to the merchants. Strength and honor are her clothing. She can laugh at the time to come. Her mouth speaks wisdom, and loving instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the activities of her household and is never idle. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also praises her. Many women have done noble deeds, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord will be praised. Give her the reward of her labor and let her works praise her at the city gates. 
Uh, this comes from Corinthians 13. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now, we see only a reflection as in a mirror, then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But love is the greatest of these. Well, Ali and Chris, we said we'd kind of try and keep it simple <laughs> and basic today, so I'd like to share with you the three main reasons why God created this thing called marriage. The first reason he created marriage was to meet your need for companionship. Uh, the only time in the creation account that God looks at something and sees it's not good is when he sees that man's alone. And uh, so I, I think that that's telling us that for most of us, there, there's some people who will go through life without a partner, but for most of us, I believe God will call and design someone for us to meet this need of companionship, a lifelong companion. And I want to encourage you to see each other as God's provision for that and to protect that relationship. And while, of course, it's, uh, the Bible says we leave our parents, we cling to one another because a new family is starting, we keep those relationships, of course. But uh, I want you to, to uh, protect this friendship, this best friendship that God is creating as you both are God's provision to meet this deep need you have for a lifelong companion. The second reason that God created marriage is really to paint a picture, a portrait to the world of the kind of relationship that he wants to have with each individual person that he creates. It's not an accident that in the Old Testament, Israel is called the wife and God is called the faithful husband. In the New Testament, Jesus is the groom and the church is the bride of Christ. All, all marriage language. What is God trying to communicate? He's trying to communicate that, that uh, your marriage is supposed to remind you that he has this desire to have an intimate relationship with you. Now, I, of course, uh, it's a joy for me to know I have two people in front of me who understand that there's been a great cost given for, to make that happen. Because we're sinners we're unable to have that kind of intimacy with God but God sent his son to die in our place and, and for those of us who believe and surrender our lives to him God makes a way now for us to have this intimacy with him and because of your faith in Christ you have the ability to have this great intimate love relationship with God I, I, I want you to, to um, remember that your love that you're going to enjoy as husband and wife is really just a sample of the kind of intimacy that God wants to have with each of you. The third reason that God created marriage and really the reason he creates everything is to bring honor or glory back to him. And I think uh, the Bible is pretty clear. It's, it's a very practical way that we do that. Every time, Chris, you are loving the way you're supposed to love her as a Christian husband and, and it's not a macho love it's a servant love it follows the model of Jesus so every time you're serving her and serving uh, your family uh, you bring glory and honor to God in heaven in, in very practical ways that you do that every day and uh, all, every time Allie that you honor this man and build him up and respect him I don't know 
any husband that doesn't want to know that his wife believes in him and, and wants to respect him. And so every time you do that, uh, you bring glory and honor to God in heaven in the most practical ways every day. Now, I don't think that there is a couple that comes before a pastor, a priest, a rabbi, and, and they don't think that their marriage is going to last forever. I mean, everybody comes to this altar and they think it's going to work and it's going to last. But the statistics, even though they're getting better, it's still uh, within five years, almost 50% of the people who make these kinds of promises break them. And if... Nothing else that tells us that, that you and I, we just don't have the resources just within us to make this kind of commitment last. We're going to need God in the middle of the marriage. And so Christian marriage is really not about two people going through life trying to look into each other's eyes and just get resources from each other. It's really two people facing Christ wanting him to change them and become everything that he wants them to be. And what he does is he checks your sin nature and he makes you more loving and more forgiving. And so the picture is like a triangle and you have the husband and wife at either ends and the closer they get to God, the closer they get to Christ, the closer they get to each other. And the storms are going to come. I mean, they, they come in every marriage. The, the winds blow, the storms come. We're imperfect people. But the Bible says that if you build your marriage on Christ and your relationship with him, it will not only survive, it will thrive. Before God and these witnesses, will you, Chris, take a lesson in your life? You love and comfort her honor and keep her, and in joy and sorrow preserve with her this bond, holy and unbroken, until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is whom she both shall live. I will. For God and his witnesses, will you elicit a Chris to be your husband, who you love and comfort him, honor and keep her, in joy and sorrow preserve with him this bond, holy and unbroken, until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is one of you both shall live. I will. Thank you, Mr. Chris. Repeat after me. I, Chris. I, Chris. Take you, Alyssa. Take you, Alyssa. To be my wife. To be my wife. You are the person. You are the person. God, through his perfect will. God through his perfect will has chosen for me. Has chosen for me. Now before God. Now before God. And my family and friends. And my family and friends. I pledge my life to you. I pledge my life to you. To share all that I am. To share all that I am. And all that I have. All that I have. Just as Christ loves his church. Just as Christ loves his church. I will love you. I will love you. I pledge to protect. I pledge to protect. Honor. Honor, strengthen, strengthen, encourage, encourage, and love you, and love you, no matter the circumstances. No matter the circumstances. In my weakness, in my weakness, I will rely on His power. I will rely on His power. I will love you always. I will love you always. Using Christ as my example. Using Christ as my example. I pledge this all to you. I pledge this all to you. As long as God shall give me life. As long as God shall give me life. Repeat after me, I Alyssa. I Alyssa. Take you, Chris. Take you, Chris. To be my husband. To be my husband. You are the person. You are the person. God, through his perfect will. God, through his perfect will. Has chosen for me. Has chosen for me. Now before God. Now before God. And my family and friends. And my family and friends. I pledge my life to you. I pledge my life to you. To honor you. To honor you. Love you unconditionally. Love you unconditionally. Using Christ as my example. Using Christ as my example. Respect you. Respect you. And pray for you. And pray for you. These are my promises to you. These are my promises to you. As long as God shall give you life. As long as God shall give you life. 
This uh, is also prepared some vows that you would like now to say today. I Alyssa. I Alyssa. Take you great. Take you great. To be my son. To be my son. Today I marry your dad. Today I marry your dad. And when I say I do. And when I say I do. I am promising you forever too. I am promising you forever too. In my eyes. In my eyes. You will always be my first child. You will always be my first child. And I promise. And I promise. To never treat you differently. Other children I may have with your dad. And other children I may have with your dad. I promise to love. I promise to love. To support you. To support you. To be both mother and friend. To be both mother and friend. I will not attempt. I will not attempt. To replace anyone in your life. To replace anyone in your life. But instead. Instead. Will be in addition to you. Will be in addition to you. And make a place in your heart. For myself alone. For myself alone. I love you today. I love you today. And vow to love you. And vow to love you. For all of our tomorrows. For all of our tomorrows. As a token of these covenants, you will now give and receive. circle, the emblem of eternity, and the goal, the emblem of that which is least tarnished and most enduring, is to show how lasting is the pledge you have each made to the other. With these emblems of purity and endless devotion, you each the other way, and these married vows you here and now. Let's pray together. Father, we have just witnessed these two people making these promises to each other and to you. We pray now, God, that you would give them the grace and the strength and the commitment to stand by these promises. We believe, God, you have a, a wonderful future for them. We pray, God, that you, be, that you would continue to bless their family and increase their family. We pray, God, that their home have lots of laughter and peace. And God, I pray that you, if, if it's in your will, God, that you would build godly generations through this home that will glorify you for many, many years. Give them all the joy, all the happiness, the dreams that they always had of what marriage could be like. We pray, God, that you would grant it to them because of their faith in you, their love for you, and their desire to please you. We pray this all in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. much as you, Chris, and you, Alyssa, have thus consented in holy matrimony, and have witnessed the same before God and these friends, by virtue of the authority vested in me as a minister of the Word of God and by the laws of the state, 
I now pronounce you husband and wife. Therefore, what God has joined together, let man not separate. And it's worth the travel life's road together. Let love guide all of your relationships. May Christ be the head of your home. The unseen guest of every meal. The silent listener of every conversation. Have his constant benediction crown your union with increasing joy and blessedness, and unite your hearts and lives by the grace and true affection of God. God of the universe. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be very gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my privilege to introduce to you for the very first time as husband and wife, Mr. and Mrs. Chris Inker. Woo!